Stephen David Roach on the fan. Welcome. Good to see you, Andrew. It's been taking a while. How, how many people are allowed to call you Stephen? Mum would be one. Mm. Who else? I probably wouldn't answer to Stephen. Um, John Quayle called me that once. Right. Keithy Barnes, if I was in trouble. Yes. Keithy would go, Stephen, you got a sec? I knew if you said, if you got a minute, I was all right. But if you said, you got a sec, all I right. was in trouble. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so it's well, it's not Steve from here on. It's actually Blocker. Where, where did the name Blocker come from? Who was the first person to tag you Blocker Roach? Well, I think it was uh, Alan, Sound the Alarm. It's Alan McMahon. When I first came to Sydney through a bloke named Noel Yeomans, I used to travel up with, with Alan McMahon uh, in those days. I had from to play, Wollongong? From Wollongong. I yep. had to play a couple of years in the juniors to start with. And uh, it used to be Blockhead. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get rid of that pretty quickly. So, yeah, we shortened it down to Blocker. So, I mean... Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's stuck now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely it has. Yeah. It's, it, well, people don't know you as anything but That's right. Blocker. I get surprised when someone... Well, no, it never really happens. Yes, that's no right. One ever says, yeah, never, no one ever says, Stephen. Kid from Wollongong playing the toughest position on the rugby league field when the game was a little bit different. I mean, yeah. early 80s. But you're a big boy. Yeah. You could hold your own. Were you scared at all? Coming into grade as a front rower as a young fella. I was scared all the time. I've told the story before. Um, we played in a trial match against uh, against Cessnock. Matty John's dad was the coach. Matty John's was the ball boy this day. I was about 19 or 20, and I played against a bloke named Willie Tarry. The other front rower for Cessnock was uh, Henry Tartner. Right, OK. <laughs> the goal-kicking yeah, yeah. front rower, the Kiwi International. Mate, I reckon, uh, I reckon the bloke punched six holes in me in my first, uh, in my first game. And, uh, yeah, mate, it was... Uh, you know, that, when I was growing up, you know, when I used to watch Dallas Donnelly and, you know, Igor and yeah, all those yeah, yeah. sort of guys and Arthur Beaton and all those guys, I thought that's the way, that's the way you play games because we'd watch the, the Saturday afternoon ABC match of the day mm. and, mate, <laughs> you know, first half it would be fight and then the game of footy would break out, you yeah. know? So <laughs> well I, I, actually, I actually just thought... I don't know. If you're in the front row, that's what you do. You do. Yeah. yeah and you've got to that's mark your, your territory. Mark and, your territory. And then... But, mate, I will say, I will say, all the blokes that I fought with in, in game, they're, they're my great mates. I, there's something about it, a contact sport and running into people that you earn respect and you respect the other people that you play against. And when you finish playing, shake hands. And in those days, we'd go back to a, we'd go back to the pub or the club mm. and go, geez, you got me a good one there, <laughs> you know, or, you know, whatever. And, um, yeah, it just... Uh, no one no one sort of held any grudges, I, I suppose, unless unless someone got kicked in or whatever or hit on the ground or your halfback got bashed or whatever like that. Well, I'm going to blow a bit of smoke up your you-know-where now. Oh, now, during lockdown, <laughs> during lockdown, we got the chance to recall old games. And it, it gave us all a reminder of, yes, Stephen Roach, big, tough, but ball skills, I thought, were fantastic. Where, where did that come from? Because... You were a genuine offloader, bringing two and three and they're attacking you and you'd still slip the pass. Uh, Very subtle, soft hands. Mate, as I mentioned just a, a minute ago, I, lo I loved watching Arthur. Mm. I, I, you know, I, I idolised him. It was funny, I got to play in an under 18 match, New South Wales versus Queensland, the very first State of Origin game in 1980. Right. And I got to I got to be close to Arthur Beach and I remember him running out. Uh, if you rem remember the pitch, I'll never forget it. We were sitting on the sideline after the game. We were allowed on the field to sit on the sideline yep. and watch. Out comes this monster with white, with white powder all over All over him. Jersey, yeah. Both hands strapped. Yep. And snot and spit and everything <laughs> coming out of him. And then he went on and just, he, he bashed the whole pack. The whole team. He bashed the whole Everyone. pack. I mean, and I'm just like in awe of him. And But um, getting back to, I used to love watching him play, just the way he could offload the ball. And I'm not saying, mate, I was nowhere near as good as Arthur, but I just liked the way um, that he that he played footy. Well, I'm here to tell you, you were very, very good. And and it is an art that is you're basically lost from the game, the, the variety of ball skills of the traditional front rower through a stellar career, achievement, state and country. But let's focus on a big day. Yep. And I do have to go there. Yeah, it's good, Because mate. you I... missed 88 yep. grand final, you play 89. Yeah. The combination of those two days, you know, the disappointment of the fact you couldn't be on the field in 88, and then 89 finishes the way it did against Canberra. Yeah. Where does that sit now all these years on? Oh, it's hard to take, mate. But, you know, it was harder to take because, you know, it was our... Well, it was our... My one and only chance. Otherwise, yes. I got suspended yeah. the week... Uh, four weeks into the game in a semi-final against Penrith. And then 80, 89 was... Um, 89 was a big chance for us. But, do you know, as I've gotten older, 
and mate, I, I toured with Mel and Laurie Daly and Ricky Stewart and Brad Clyde mm. and, and Glenn Lazarus. Yep. Those guys, apart from Mel, really weren't household names yet, but they become some of the greatest players ever to play. Yep. And um, when I look back on it now, and uh, you know, being beaten by them, I hated getting beat. I wanted to win yeah, a comp. Of course. I wanted to win a comp, but uh, looking back at it now, those guys, uh, those guys dominated. Uh, after they won that grand final for the next decade, so and and become some of the best players we've ever heard of. So um, you know, I was dirty getting beat, but you know, going on tours with all those guys and playing with those guys was uh, was was special. Yeah, you're a character, uh, hard on your sleeve, yeah. player. 1990, there was a day, <laughs> the touch judge. <laughs> oh, the touch. <laughs> There's a little pat on the head. Yes. All of that. Um, Again, I ask, I mean, how do you look back? That was that Steve Roach being Steve Roach. That was heat of the moment stuff. Do you regret it? Things like that. You get uh, asked about it so many oh, times. And, oh, yeah, it's you funny. Know, it's, it's it, funny. Becomes a, it becomes a humorous story. It's funny, Andrew. You know, you mentioned before about, you know, I was all like playing, playing too, but if anyone ever mentions now, it's the pat on the head. What, uh, what happened was, mate, we, we were getting carved up in the penalties. It was at Brookvale Oval. Yes. I'd been warring with Adrian Shelford. God rest his soul. He's not with us anymore. And... The ref just said, mate, I've had enough of you. And I and I just sort of turned around and said, mate, it's a rort anyway, we can't win. And I just sort of, I don't know. I think I got I think I got an extra couple of weeks for calling the uh, the touch judge a, a wombat. 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 Well, right. I, I used a you couple of words before animal. that. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I called him a wombat. And I also said to him, don't worry, it was a TV game. I also said to him, mate, don't worry, mummy knows you're on telly, you know. You keep going on and off here all Stephen, the time. Forgive me. I know, forgive you for your sins. This is confession I know, time. It's confession time. <laughs> so I reckon I got an extra couple of weeks. I reckon I got an extra couple of weeks. But when when I look back on it, mate, silly thing to do, but I don't know, it was a spirit, as you said, mate, it was a spirit of mate. I didn't I didn't mean any malice by it. I was it's, just it's like rugby league football. It was just no, like, it's, 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 I was just like, oh mate, we, you know, we're getting rorted here. We can't we can't win. Now from representative football, something that can't be taken off you. Uh, in the, the ongoing history of State of Origin, you were part of the first series win for New South Wales, 1985. 85, yeah. Enormous. Uh, did you realise how big that was at the time? Uh, we were reminded because of Steve Mortimer. Steve Mortimer was un unbelievable. I only watched that game the other day. Mate, what a, what a competitor. Like, just getting in... Mate, playing against that Queensland pack were tough blokes. And, you know, Wally and Mel and Closey and all that sort of blokes, Gene Miles. Getting in and running the ball from dummy half, one out, yeah. and getting bashed. But he was a great leader, and you know he just, just, just the way that he that he spoke to his team. We were only, we were impressionable young kids. We were, I think we were 22 or 21 yeah. or whatever yeah. it was. We were only young, but just the way he spoke to us about, you know, making history. He spoke about that then, about making history, and and um, you know it was um, you know when he dropped to his knees in the, at, the, at the last game. Uh, at the second game when we won when the, you series, the series, yeah. dropping to his knee, I reckon that should be folklore. That should be the trophy for New South Wales. It was a, it was an emotional time. It was a, a time that, you know, he, his leadership was just that great that we didn't believe that we could we could lose. You know, and Queensland, you know, you talk about that great side that went on the run, mate. That Queensland side was a great side too. Yeah. Now for Australia, wearing the green and gold, modern day player can't. Um, understand how good kangaroo tours were. Every former international you speak to speaks in glowing terms about how good it was to yeah. go away as a group of players for a couple of months, England and France. For you, career highlight? Oh, easily, mate. I was lucky enough to go on too, Andrew. Um, I think as a, as a kid, you know, watching the Wembley final, getting up at yep. three in the morning and, and watching, you know, or getting up and watching a test match or always dreaming to want to go over there and play in England. Um, the guys, the guys today don't know what they're missing out on. You know, yep. we, we'd go and play. We, we get off the plane on a Thursday. Wigan were the best team in, in England. Yep. So we'd get off a plane on Thursday, turn up to their ground. Yeah. Mate, there'd be 40,000 there. Which was Central Park. It was like the, fourth, Central, the unofficial mate, fourth test, mate, wasn't it? Mate, that, it was that you'd play at Central Park. Andrew, it was unbelievable, yeah. mate. Just, um, just, the, just the crowds. Yeah. Um, the best thing, and, and the crowds singing and carrying on. Mel Manier had played for St Helens. And they used to take the bus into the old grounds and we'd get off the bus and then go straight into the dressing rooms. Yeah. We, we played St Helens in a, in a club game. That's what I was going to say about, you know, all the club games was unreal. Yeah. Playing yeah. in the club game, St Helens, you know, Wigan, um, Leeds, all that sort of stuff. Bradford. Anyway, Mel, Mel's about, to, he's Australian captain, is about to get off the Australian bus. I swear there was 5,000 people around the bus singing there's only one Mel Meninga yeah. as he got off the bus. To me... I mean, you know, they just they just love the Aussies, right. and and you know, just the opportunity to play against all those club sides because they they try to bash us in that because they bash us for the yeah so to play in the in the test matches the next week. But we 
we were lucky enough we had 20, uh, 28 on the tour. And they called them the emus. Uh, we'd play uh, midweek, midweek and then, yep. and then uh, you know, if you, if you were lucky enough to play in the test, you'd play on the weekend. You're a tough player. What about the toughest blokes you played against? Would, is, is, there, is there a standout? I mean, straight away in my head, because I used to love Balmain South matches, and I think of Les Davidson. Oh, Les Davidson, easy. Uh, Les Davidson, Craig Young. I, I looked up to Craig Young when I was playing, mate. What, he could move a whole scrum, Craig Young. It was unbelievable. Um, as I said, you know, I, I never got to play against Arthur, but he was my hero as I was growing up. Mate, probably one that might surprise everyone was Herbie Freeman, that played for Western Suburbs okay, Magpie. Yeah, Freeman, yeah. Mate, yeah, he, was right. a, mate he was a hard wow. man. But in, in saying that, Andrew, like every week was a battle. Like, yes. you, there's no, uh, um, you can't tip your toe in the water when you're playing in that position. No.